Okay, guys, up next are possessives. So these are words that show um, when someone obviously possesses something, when someone owns something. So in English, there will be words like his or her. Now, in Latin, there are two different types. There's non-reflexives and there's reflexives. And these are similar to the uh, non-reflexive and um, reflexive pronouns that we met previously in that non-reflexives refer to something um, that doesn't belong to the doer of the verb, whereas a reflexive refers to something that does belong to the doer of a verb. So, for example, if um, a boy wanted to talk about something that he possesses, he would use a reflexive possessive pronoun. If a boy wanted to talk about something that a girl or his friend or anyone else possessed, he would use a non-reflexive possessive pronoun because he's talking about the property of someone else. Now, we've already met non-reflexive uh, possessives. They are these words here. Uh, if you look at your table, is, a, er, id, these are the words that appear in the genitive row. Um, because if you think about it, if you want to say, I look at the house of him, or in maybe nicer English, I look at his house, you would use of him, eos. Okay. If you wanted to say, uh, we saw the dogs of them, so in nicer English, we saw their dogs, you would use aorum or arum, depending on whether uh, they are a group of boys or whether they're a group of girls. Um, I'll show you the difference in a couple of sentences here. So uh, the reflexive, um, rather than the non-reflexive, is the word suos. Okay, so if you are talking about, I see, uh, sorry, the boys see their mother, the girls see their dogs, the man looks at his house, this is the word you want to use, suos, because it's referring to the person who's doing the action in the sentence and it belongs to them. So here are the sentences below. Femina matrem eos vidit, now in this one we've got eos, so this does not refer to femina, okay? It cannot refer to the doer of the verb because it's a non-reflexive. So this one we would translate as the woman saw, and then matrem eos, the mother of, we don't know who this is, we aren't given the context, so it could be the mother of him, the mother of her. What it's definitely not is the mother of her as in this woman, because it's not reflexive. So let's just assume that it's talking about a man. So the woman saw his mother. Okay. The difference is in this second one, you've got a form of suos. Uh, you can see it's changed its ending there. We'll talk about that in a second. So this one, the woman saw, and this time Suan definitely does refer to Femina, so the woman saw her mother. Okay, so there's your key difference. Non-reflexive is the first one, reflexive is the second one. I want you to look at this uh, set of notes here and copy them into your books, please, boys. Okay, beneath that, I want you to write these straightforward instructions. So, aos, aorum, arum does not refer to the doer of the verb. And suos, sua, suum does refer to the doer of the verb. So, there's your difference between non-reflexive and reflexive. Now, notice that I've added in these uh, because we've just got very straightforward masculine suos, feminine sua, and neuter suum. And that word will change according to case, number, and gender, just like any normal adjective. So just like the adjective uh, bonus, um, it will change its ending. And its first declension if it's feminine, and its second declension if it's masculine or neuter. If you've forgotten any of those endings, make sure you refer back to the tables at the back of the textbook uh, of the first and second declension. Okay, two more examples underneath that that we're going to do together now. So the first one, ankylae dominum suum non amant. We've got reflexives here. So the slave girls, oops, sorry, non amant, don't love. Suum dominum must be 
their master. And it must be their master because it's reflexive. The second one, however, we have the boys spectant watch. Now it can't be their guards because this is not reflexive. So it's custodes eos, the guards of him or of her. We don't know because that word is the same whether it's masculine or feminine. Uh, so let's assume it's a man. Uh, the boys watch the guards of him. So literally in nicer English, uh, his guards. Okay, make sure you pause this and copied all that out before we do uh, the exercise. Okay guys, one last thing before we do the exercise is just to note this idiom, so make sure you note this down. Uh, if you're not sure what the word idiom means, it basically is something that happens in a language uh, that doesn't happen in another language. Uh, so that means it's weird and strange and we won't really understand it, but we just must make a note of it so that we can translate it as best we can. So the word suos, now as we know this means his, her or their, uh, depending on who's doing the verb, uh, is quite often put in a sentence on its own without a noun. So it's his blank and we don't know what that thing is. Uh, quite often in a military context we are going to insert the word men um, because uh, that is how it makes most sense. So instead of saying, for example, uh, like the leader uh, led his, we would say the leader led his men. And sometimes uh, Latin would leave out that word, but we have to pop it in so that it makes sense. Uh, we'll add an example at the bottom here. Uh, so, dux suos in periculum misit. So this literally says the leader led sent his into danger. So instead we're gonna say the leader sent his men into danger. Okay, so we're gonna add that word there so it sounds right. Okay, so I would like you now to uh, write up and complete exercise 536 on page 167. Pause this video, give yourself time uh, to translate uh, spend time thinking not just about the word suos and eos, but also about the tenses, about the cases, etc. Uh, and once you've completed it, hit play and I will reveal the answers. Okay, so number one. Oh, I don't know why we're highlighted there. Oh well, we'll get on with it. The citizens, credibant. Uh, were semper, were always trusting, okay, regi suo, their leader. And the suo is referring back to the citizens because it is reflexive. If you're wondering why those endings look a bit strange, remember credo is followed by the dative case, so they are both datives. Uh, they're both different because rex, regi, belongs to the third declension, whereas suos, as we've mentioned, belongs to the first or second, depending on the gender. Number two, don't translate amicos nostros first. They are accusative, so translate the verb. We love our friends et villam aorum and the house of them, so their house. Number three, the king, Yosit, ordered suos, his, so we need to insert the word men, pugnare fortiter, to fight bravely. Number four, after the death of the old man, Phileos Eos, the son of him, so his son. Habibat literally was having the kingdom. Nicer English had the kingdom. Sorry about my juddery screen, boys. I don't know what's going on with it. And then finally, number five, the soldiers, Necaverant Suum, suum Ducem, killed their leader, and miserant sent caput eos the head of him so his head to row done any questions let me know